Now in cooperation with police and federal law enforcement departments throughout the United States. The only national program that brings you authentic police case histories. Gangbusters. Tonight, the case of the triple threat bandits, whose leader used a broom as the principal cover in his subtlest disguise, but learned even that was unable to hide his soiled record. And now to gangbusters and facts that show the operation of our law enforcement officials in their war against the underworld. Gangbusters has asked Inspector of Detectives Eugene Bernath, Police Department, Minneapolis, Minnesota, to narrate by proxy tonight's case. The inside facts in the case of the triple threat bandits. Inspector Bernath, I understand the gang in tonight's case thought that a clever sort of disguise would provide them plenty of protection. That's right, Don Gardner. But they were to learn that fast communication systems and efficient exchange of police information, plus cooperation from federal law enforcement agencies, is making long-range criminal operation less and less successful. Well, suppose you tell us about tonight's case, Inspector Bernath. All right, Don. I think it would be best to start about six months ago in the city of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Near the ballpark of the Minneapolis Millers, at a bar patronized by the sporting crowd, a stranger was buying drinks for the few hangers-on remaining late one night. He was just finishing one of his favorite stories as the porter approached with his broom to gather in stray cigarette butts. He says to her, she says back to him, she says, well, I don't like to ride streetcars either. You got some other way to go? <laughs> Excuse me, please. I'd like to sweep a little bit under the stools, huh? Mm, sure, sure. Sweep when you like. When you're finished, I'll buy you a drink. No, thanks, mister. I never touch this stuff. Oh, listen to him. He never touches this stuff. It ain't good for athletes. He used to be middleweight champion of Lazarus County. <laughs> yeah? Well, <laughs> hey. Hey, Frank. Frank. Hmm? You speak to me? Frank, how you been? Hey, what are you doing here? I'm no Frank. I'm Nick. You're mixed up a little bit. Excuse me. There's more cigarette butts over there. Hey, come on, the guy's punchy. How about another story? Yeah, in a minute. Hey, Nick. Whatever you call yourself. Yeah? I'd swear you're a guy I used to know. A guy named Frank. He wasn't no boxer. Is that right? No kidding? No kidding. Uh, it's Nick, not Frank. Excuse me, mister. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah? If you ain't Frank, how come you look so much like him? You're uh, Frank. He pushes a broom, too? Ah, he pushes something else. 11, 18 Walker Street, 3 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, 3 o'clock. Apartment 6. Sure, Frank. I see you, Nick. 3 o'clock. Excuse me, mister. Drink. I'm not interested in the drink. Where's Nick? I got rye and scotch and gin and rye and rye. And that's all. I never drink in the afternoon. Neither do I. But I read in the paper we're having a total eclipse. Look, lady, just tell Nick that Sino is here. I got a little date with him at 3 o'clock. Did you say rye? I said Nick. Oh, yeah, Nick. Nick and soda or water on the side? <clears throat> Excuse me, but did anybody ever tell you about orange juice? Sure. <gasps> Nick. Uh-huh, now we're getting someplace. If you'll just... Hey, sit on. Frank. Come in here until I finish getting dressed. <laughs> Goodbye. Don't drown in that stuff. Come in, sit on. I'll be dressed in a minute. Sure, Frank. Nick. Hey, Nick. Look, uh, who's the female rum dum? Yeah, Vicky, if that's her name. She's my housekeeper. Okay, say no more. But doesn't that Kentucky ketchup she drinks get in the way of her duties, whatever they may be? Yeah, she's carrying some kind of torch. She's sober when she has to be. 
And what about that routine with a broom? What kind of a gimmick is that? It's a job. I told the guy I was a fallen gladiator of the rink. Oh, I got a job. Fine job. Who needs it? How do you like the shirt? Made to order. Eighteen bucks. For one? How many do you think? A dozen? Hmm. Got to have something to wear to work. See, now, how'd you like a soft spot? With a broom, no thanks. I've been tearing this town apart. And St. Paul, too. Back and forth across the river. Liquor stores are a push of it. Alone? Mostly. Vicky helps with the driving and the casing when I need it. <laughs> she can kill two birds with one store. <laughs> well, how about it? You think the two of us can do better? Much better. Than the three of us and the four of us and the five of us. Do better all along. Better and better. Excuse me, Nick. That's a lot of talk coming from a guy who's right now pushing a broom. Maybe. But if anybody starts asking questions, a steady job is a nice answer. Also, that tavern's going to be the one big touch before I blow this down. Yeah, I can see how big. A dollar thirty-four and two quarts of beer. You see, you don't know nothing. Okay, tell me something. On certain nights, a safe in that joint has got nearly thirty grand in it. Thirty grand? In cash? What do you think? Lock washers? <laughs> okay. Where do you get them eighteen buck shirts? Yeah. You've got to wait our moments. Oh, I can wait. If meantime, I got what to eat. There's still plenty of liquor stores. Good, good. Let's try one on for size. Now, tell you what. We can bring your housekeeper back a present. Inspector of Detectives Minneapolis to Chief of Detectives St. Paul. Liquor store bandit also joined here by number two man of similar description. Two jobs last night. Are you sober, Vicky? Yes. Do you want to do something about it? Get hold of Sino. Tell him tonight's the night. Safe is loaded. I wish I was. Tell him to be at the back door five minutes after closing. Five minutes after closing. I'll tell him. You be there with the car. Just at the spot we figured. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Okay. So long. Yes, sir, Mr. Lander. Let's get the place cleaned up fast tonight. I don't want to get home as quick as I can. Yes, sir, me too. Let's get cleaned up fast, huh? Yeah. Nick. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Lander. Where are you going? Well, just to dump the trash out and back. Oh, yeah. Well, make it snappy, you know, like it was the tenth round coming up. Yeah, sure, make it snappy. Everything make it snappy, eh? Yes, sir, snappy. Stand up. Everything okay, Nick? How's it look? It'll be fine. Now, march me back in there, but you got to make it look good for the boss. Keep your face covered. Okay. Go ahead, Nick. March. You're all set on how to handle the guy. Yeah, I'm going to say it, too. Okay, see now. Here it goes. All right, get in there. Okay, okay, I'm going. Get those hands up. Yes, sir, yes, sir, mister. Hey, I will. what's the... Put your hands in the air, mister, and walk over here. All right. Hold up, Mr. Lennon. He knows it. Go ahead, walk to the safe, both of you. Go on, walk. Yeah, I guess we better, Mr. Lennon. Maybe he'd shoot us. Or worse, go on. All right. Now, I don't want a sound out of either of you. I want the dough out of that safe, and I want all of it. I don't know nothing about safes. Honest, Mr. Lennon. Just I don't... walk. Come on, let's get him. Oh, you don't stand here. me. But I don't Sucker. know how. Wise guy. should have helped me, Nick. Quiet. I, I didn't figure he'd fight the gun. Shut up. He's dead. Go on, get out of here. But he's dead. We might as well get the dough. How are we going to open a safe? Go on, scram you. What about the cops? I'm in the clear. Go on, get out. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you later. So, Don, the carefully planned robbery during which Nichols and Sino hoped to get the contents of the safe ended with the shooting of Nichols' employer. Nichols waited for the police to arrive at the scene and told them the story he'd so carefully contrived. But the case suddenly took a fantastic turn, and the gang leader found his plans might very well lead to immediate arrest. Now back to gangbusters. 
Uh, you were telling us, Inspector Bernath, how the criminal Nichols staged a hold up at the Minneapolis Tavern where he held a cover job. That's right, Don. But the crime took an unexpected turn when Nichols' confederate, Sino, shot the tavern manager. Sino fled the scene, and as Nichols brazenly phoned for the police, Sino returned to Nichols' apartment where he met the girl, Vicky. Shut up, will you? What's the matter with you? Can't you lay off that bug juice for a while? We got troubles. Ah, uh, what's a little thing like murder? Keep quiet about it. Why are you blabbing your mouth to a fool? Brother, you need a drink. It's the last thing I need. Where's the devil to make it get here? So do I. I'm getting hungry. Where do you keep those matches? If they were any closer, they'd strike on your nose. The table, they're right on the table. Thanks. You want a cigarette? Nasty habit. I hope Nick's got some ideas. I hope... Is that Nick? Who else? If he isn't feeling better than you... Hey. What? Just a minute. I'll get it. Nick. Yeah, come on, open up, will you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well... We're in for it. In for it? What do you mean? Hello, Nick. Did you have fun? Shut up, will you? What do you mean, Nick? We're in for it. Lender isn't dead. You're kidding. They took him to the hospital. The cops told me he might pull through. Should we feel sorry or glad? Hey, Nick, they don't suspect you, do they? If they did, do you think he'd be here now? Nick, if Lender heard us talking, if he ain't dead... He was unconscious. But he could have heard us talking if he tells the I cops... I said he was unconscious. But unconscious people get conscious. Sometimes it's nicer to be unconscious. He probably passed out as soon as the shot hit him. Yeah, but supposing he didn't. Supposing he knew what was going on. Okay, suppose. Hey, Nick, we just... We got time. I want to go now. I want to go quick. They say Florida's nice this time of year. Now, look. If I take a powder now, that's like signing a confession. If I stick around, we're all in good shape. But the guy's bound to wake up. Why take the chance? I'm saying goodbye. You're staying here as long as I tell you to but stay. Nick, I heard enough. So did I. Hey. Who's that thingy? I'll make a guess. Nick. It's the cops. Get in the other room. Yeah, okay. Talk, Nick. Talk fast. Vicky, sit down and keep your mouth shut. Okay. Yes? Who is it? Police officers. Open up. I see you made it home all right, Nichols. Yeah. I figured home was the best place. That's a good way to figure. Oh, Vicky, this is Detective Olson, or Detective... Uh, Weatherill. Uh, yeah, uh, Detective Weatherill. Glad to see you. Me too. I just spoke to the hospital, Nichols. Oh, yeah. How is Mr. Lander? Is he any better? Much better, Nichols. Oh, good. I was wishing he would be. Nice place you've got here, Nichols. Yeah, this is okay. And like I told you, I was smart. I saved a little from the fight game. Oh, yeah? yeah. Uh, what's in there, the bedroom? Yes, that's the bedroom. Uh, what's the doctor got to say about Mr. Linder? To go through that to see him shot down like that? Must have been pretty rough. Yeah, rough. That, that it was rough. Nichols. We think we might be on the right track of who that gunman is. Yeah. We think it's one of the two men who've been holding up liquor stores here and in St. Paul. I sure would like to see them caught. Well, I don't think you'll have long to wait. Who's this guy? I'd like to get him in a ring or something. Well, I'll be satisfied when we get him in our ring. Olson, show him that picture. Sure. Take a good look at this picture, Nichols. Yes. Tell us whether that's the man. Well... Before, the guy had his face covered. You said that. Yeah, but the eyes look the same. I'll never forget those eyes. Thanks. Come on, Olsen, let's go. Yeah. We'll be in touch with you, Nichols. We can reach you here, huh? Yeah, yes, sir, here, or, or at the place, sir. Well, just so we can reach you. Good night. Good morning. We'll be seeing you, Nichols. Uh, let's go out and run around the block. That wasn't Sino's picture. Nah. Some guy I never seen before. Congratulations. Yeah, Sino's right, baby. That was too close. Getting out of here. 
Let's start packing. Good. I love to travel. Vicky. Yeah, what do you want? Look around back there and get me the Nebraska roadmap. Oh. I think we stay on 77, Nick. That takes us right into Omaha. I can't find no Nebraska map. Here, take them all. Hey. Now let me try to catch a little sleep. I've been up since Tuesday. Take a look on the map, Sina. Yeah. You know anything good in Omaha? Well, there ought to be one or two easy touches there. Dock them off fast, keep on going. That's the new policy? Yeah, that's the new policy. Then where? Who knows? East, maybe south, maybe Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma. Uh, uh, maybe we better stay away from Kansas and Oklahoma. Uh, why? Vicky won't be very happy in either one of them states. They're both bone dry. Detective Olsen talking. This is Weatherill. I got news for you. Yeah? What is it? I went around to the tavern to give Nichols a look at some more pictures. And? And he didn't show up for work tonight. Would you try his rooms? I certainly did. He moved out this morning, and the janitor said he was in an awful hurry. Well. Looks to me like we couldn't see the forest for the trees, Olson. Yeah. The janitor said the girl went with him and another guy. And from the description, the other guy looks like the one that did the shooting. Uh, did you get into the place? Yeah, it was in pretty much of a mess, but I found one little item to write home about. Come on over and we'll figure out what to do about it. Hello, Pop. Eh? Any luck? Oh, no, no. But I don't fish to catch nothing particular. Oh. It's just relaxing. <laughs> I see. Well, you mind if I relax a while? No, no, help yourself. Eh... Uh, Hey, would you like to fish some? Got an extra line. No, thanks. You ain't from around here, huh? Minneapolis, that's not so far. Oh, oh Minneapolis, eh? Yeah. I ain't been into the city in years. I hear it growed some. Oh, some. I'm uh, looking for a girl named Vicki Newton. You ain't looking in the right place, son. How long ago was it she lived with you and your wife? Oh, Two years, I'd say. You ever hear from her? Uh, now and then. When she left, she left something with us. Oh, yeah? What? A baby. Uh, oh. Yeah, a little girl. Hey, sweetest little girl you ever saw. Well, did she ever come to see the kid? Uh, since she's been drinking so much and running around with that fella. What fellow? Oh, some jailbird from Indiana. Indiana, huh? Uh, his name isn't Nichols. Well, something like that, I think. Oh, excuse me, got a bite. Hey, Nick. What? Sino just told me. So he told you. What have you been doing, stealing my act and hitting the bottle? Do I look it? Why go back to Minneapolis? Minneapolis owes me something. Owes you something what, we're crying out loud. I wait much to knock over that tavern when the safe was loaded. And I draw a blank. You're not going back for that. We're driving tonight. You're crazy. Wouldn't you like to see a kid? No. Not much you wouldn't. But suit yourself. I'll be packed. What time do we leave? As soon as I get the car gassed up. Is that the call? I said, Wetherill. Okay, I'll take it here. Detective Weatherill talking. How are you, Pop? We got a letter from her. Special delivery. Yeah? What do you have to say? Well, she'll be here. Next week, she says. She wants to see a little girl. Good, good. Pop. Yeah? Have you got room to board a couple of detectives for a few days? Well, we'll make room. Okay. They'll be up there this afternoon. Now, back to gangbusters. Olson. Yes? Yeah? Nichols is back in town. He and Sino just stuck up the tavern where he used to work. What? Yeah, they were recognized by the manager and by both bartenders. And there was a car waiting. It must have been the girl. So you'd better get in touch with the men we've got up in the country. They might be heading that way to see the kid. I think I'll drive up there myself. How about you, Olson? Okay, count me in. Have you got a car at Sino? Oh, 
Boss, give me a chance to get through the silver, will you? You know how to get there, huh, Nick? Get where? Where do you think? To see my baby. I wanted to talk to you about that Vicky. Talk? What's there to talk about? We're not going up there. What do you think I came all the way back for? We're not going. There's nearly 300 in silver alone. Who cares? Nick, you promised. That's too bad. I can't take the chance. You should have thought of that before. I did think of it before. We're not going. Maybe you're not, but I am. Let me out of here. I'm going to Louisville. You're coming with me. I am not. Sit still or I'll send you someplace you're not looking to go. Hey, watch where you're driving. Okay. Don't give me no trouble, Vicky. Trouble? I couldn't give more trouble than you already got. Louisville, huh? Okay. We'll see how we like Louisville. Ah, hello, Cena. When'd you come in? I've uh, been sitting here a while. How is she? How do you think? Ah, oh, this naked beats me. If you need a dame around, so dump Vicky and get one that ain't a bottle jockey. There's plenty, you know. She was getting okay. She was laying off the stuff, and when we got back to Minneapolis, she was fine, fine. Uh, she ain't been fine here in Louisville. Oh, I don't mind somebody taking a drink, but if there's something I can't stand, it's a boozer. Especially a female boozer. Okay. Hey, you don't think it has something to do with her not seeing her kid, do you? How do I know? She never talked about the kid. should have let her see the kid. You promised Oh, don't you start. Nick. Yeah? Look, how about giving Vicky the pitch? Let's leave her and blow. Yeah, I was thinking about it, but it ain't right exactly. Eh, look who's getting a conscience. Ought to be coming around soon. Run down to the drugstore. Get a couple of containers of black coffee, will you? Uh, bring your bromo with us. Okay. Make it snappy. No deal. Bad with a good. Hello, Sino. Hey. Take it easy. You couldn't get away if you tried. Okay, okay, Copper. I ain't trying nothing. Lean up against that wall. Yeah, you sure. Hold still. I ain't carrying nothing. Nothing on him. All right, Sino. Walk back to Nichols' store. Oh, now, look. He said walk. You'll knock, and when Nichols answers, tell him you forgot something. Yeah, if you say so. Just a dame, but she passed out cold. Okay, knock. Oh, I listen. Go on, knock. Keep out of sight, also. Yeah. I thought I sent you for coffee. I forgot something, Nick. Uh, crying out loud. Can't you get it through get your head? Get up. Up. Uh, okay, I'm through. Now, both of you back up in there. Where's the girl? She's in there. She's out. That's too bad. We just wanted to thank her for the letter to a little girl and for mailing it from Louisville. Well, how do you like that? You want to know, Sino? We like it fine. Okay, Sergeant. Let's get him going. That, Don, was how the criminal activities of Frank Nichols came to an end. He and his Confederates were returned to Minneapolis and stood trial for robbery. Nichols is now serving 30 years in the Minnesota State Prison. And the others, equally appropriate terms. Well, thank you, Inspector Bernath, for narrating this pointed case history. And gangbusters congratulations to Minneapolis detectives Arthur J. Olson and Charles Wetherill. And to all the other law enforcement officers who worked so hard in bringing these criminals to justice. Leading roles were played by Frank Reddick, Mercedes McCambridge, and Ken Lynch. Don Gardner speaking. Gangbusters is a Phillips H. Lord production. <laughs> <laughs>